Hello everyone and welcome back to Agent of Gash, which channel dedicated to Age of Sigma and in this video it's going to be my Why Play Sons of Behemoth, Behemoth, however you want to pronounce it or call it, that's what I'm going to go for. And joining me in this video is going to be Anthony from AOS Coach, so thank you very much for joining me all the way from Australia, how are you doing today mate? Uh, I'm well, I'm stopping, I'm stuffing people in my pants, it is a good day to be a Gargant fantastic i'm glad to hear that and luckily you guys down there we managing to play a few games with them so a little bit better than my experience with them on tts so i'm glad to hear it um and yeah, also, I'll, br I'll bring some real i'll bring some real experience to the table here yeah as, exactly um i also just want to say as well in this recording it's going to be a little bit different i basically try to put up a format a little bit so it makes a makes it look a little bit smarter hopefully for you guys watching so if you let me know how that looks in the comments that'd be fantastic and this is also my last why play for the big armies out there apart from me going into sub allegiances which we'll go to probably in the next video of these i do this is my last big one so it's um it's cool to finish it with the um massive gargants that are the mega gargants so I love, I love how you've shot yourself in the foot, by the way, because Mortal Slanesh is coming. Uh, you've got, you've got uh, Malarian's Elves coming. Uh, that, you think you're, you're done, but you're old. never done. Look, I tell you what, this is probably about... I think this is either going to be the 23rd or the 24th episode of this series, so it shows how many like main allegiances there are out there. And uh, I know they are coming. But I have literally just, i done the wire place in there because a lot of people were asking for that. And if they keep the same name, oh, I'll get around to the mortals some other time. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> so sure. um, first things first, who are the sons of uh, Beermat, Anthony? Yeah, yeah, good question. And um, I'm not going to spend too much time on the law because I would highly recommend people go and read the book. It is a really, really, really cool book. And um, if people want to also know more about the law, you know, go check out people like 2 Plus Tough. They've Absolutely. done really great um, stories on the law. But very much what you need to understand is that um, Behemoth was not a god beast. Um, they're really descendants of a god beast. So you start to learn the story of, um, I guess, the father of the sons of Behemoth, which is Yumnog. Uh, or, I, always, I always mispronounce it. It's like Yenog or Yumnog. It's a made-up name. Uh, uh, yeah, I probably made it up wrong. But basically, um, Behemoth was the descendant of Yumnog. And um, what what you need to know, and um, this kind of ties into the Gits video that we would have done as well, is mm -hmm. um, why they're two different, like a Man Crusher and an as, as um, uh, the Aelgars Lagargan. There's a little bit of history there as well, and why um, our Gargans aren't as drunk as um the the um ale guzzlers and spoiler alert it's because we've got mega gargants who actually steal all the alcohol and we forced basically made the the um the gargants sober up so it's kind of a little cheeky nod to why we don't stumble around but in essence um the army is initially starting from gairan um in the lore there are some really cool stories about um about basically behemoth and behemoth became essentially the champion to gorkamorka and there's a little bit of chaos uh, tainting in the in the mix, a little bit of a uh, little bit of whispers, and basically it caused a little bit of a riff as well. But there's you know a whole bunch of uh, really cool challenges, and you know they're basically uh, they're like it's it's a very very cool story. It's um very untraditional the way that the the gargants kind of tell their stories as well. It's very very tribal, very very story orientated. And the way that you learn about the history of the Gargans is certainly different to any other battle tome I've read. So, um, and there's some cool little spoilers in there as well, or a little bit of like little nods in there. There's a, uh, they allude to something called the Creepers, which who knows, maybe a, a, the next AOS army to come out. We don't know, but um, basically, essentially, the Gargans are the, son, the sons of Behemoth, um, and it's that lineage of. Uh, they're they're back. They're awake. They're hungry. Uh, they want to do some damage, but also um, what you expect from a gargan? They just kind souls. Probably why they were drew, why I was drawn to them because I'm a very kind soul. Obviously, very close to your city to sigma there in terms of aesthetic and law, and how they really um, connect with their sort of ethics. I, I would say for the gargans, I, I think it's cool that they fleshed out. 
Gargant in Age of Sigma. I think there's still um, they can go further with it, and it's just nice to have something behind these big models because even before the new Mega Gargant kits that we're aware of came out. We had those, as you call the Aeol Guzzler Gargants, or you could get the Chaos ones. I think they were called Chaos Gargants. Yeah, yeah. But they were always just like kind of that ally or just something that never really had its time in the spotlight. I know you could take them in Glooms by Gits, but there wasn't really too much about them. So it's nice that they've now been given their own faction, if you will. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, like I've I've really glossed over the law here, guys. Um, and I, and I don't want to spoil it for you. I just want to give you some tasters. And, um, you know, there's some cool stuff about, you know, a Gargant King called King Broad. There is um, some stories about how basically, um, obviously, the fight between Chaos and Sigma were coming about. And um, and Chaos were, were, were trying to use that relationship and try to create a bit of a rift between Gorka Walker and, um, and Behemoth. And the reason Behemoth died was because of a Celeste, well, the story is a Celeste and Prime uh, killed it with Gal Moraz. And the reason for it is because um, there was a risk or there was being tainting of chaos because they knew that to get into Sigma, to, to get through, you know, the Iron Gates, they needed something like Behemoth to break down those gates. So instead of uh, allowing the Gargants to actually do that, uh, unfortunately, the Stormcast had to kill the Gargans instead of, um, you know, instead of being Chaos Corrupted. So, uh, again, I'm, I'm kind of just, like, scratching the surface, it's, but it's absolutely there's fine. a lot of really cool stories that I would highly recommend. At minimum, you go check out 2 Plus Tough. At best, you pick up this book and read it, because it is a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, I really want to nail down what you said there, that this is literally, I'm presuming, you, like I said, how many Y play videos I've done that you guys probably watch from my other ones. What we do here is we do very much of a summary of the lore and just like look at it from a bird's eye view a bit. And then we go over the strengths and weaknesses of the army. So hopefully by the end of this video, you have an idea if this is an army you actually want to buy, collect, build and paint and put on the tabletop or there's maybe another army out there for yourself. What I will say with that is that if you're looking at other armies, course check out one of the other videos but if you are <laughs> chicken has said maybe check, out, check out the other Sigma. video <laughs> check out the other videos but uh just join me in gits uh cities of sigma or gargants you will have a great time exactly and i just want to um second what you said there about if you want more lore can't get enough of uh two plus tough lore videos absolutely fantastic and i know yourself anthony you've done a few more in-depth talkings on the um son of uh beam at it's all right, discussions all and stuff. All the you? armies, all, all the armies are, we've talked about on my channel. So uh, if you are looking at some of the lists and how they kind of come about, regardless of what army you pick, um, you can also check out some of the lists that we've talked about to put this all into into practice. Exactly. So um, so with that, my next question for you, um, Anthony, is going to be: Why did you personally choose this army? What is it that drew you to the um, Sons of Behemoth? Because I basically wanted to prove how rich I was to all my opponents. Like, I just, like, <laughs> throw down wads of cash and, and uh, show them how much money I make in the real world. No. Um, the Sons of Ehemat actually aren't that expensive. When you when you cost it out pound for pound, they are a little bit more expensive than other armies. But they are on, they are on par. But what you get is a really cool range. So, without, like, put that aside for a second. Why did I get into Sons of Ehemat? So when I, I really like Gargans. The Gargans uh, models, unfortunately, haven't really uh, inspired me in the past. And more importantly, in the, in the, the Gits army, I, I wasn't a big fan. I loved the idea of Gargans being a fantasy, one of a fantasy player. Um, I have known Gargans for a very long time, you know, Gargans or giants that have lived in or near the Empire. Um, Gargans have been one of these mytho mythological creatures um, that have been around for such a long time that the minute I saw that this army was being announced and we saw some of the photos, I knew it was in for me. I had played a lot of horde armies in the past. I played elite armies in the past, you know, high armored uh, armies, but I'd never played an army with such a low model count. I'm not a 40k player, so I don't play with Titans. Um, I don't have a Beast Claw Raider army. I was inspired, and I do have a Flesh Eater Quartz army around what was called the Royal Menagerie, which is now basically just Grizzlegore. 
Um, but the idea of the monster smash and just having a couple of models on the table that I could spend a lot of time painting, but more importantly, converting. Um, anyone who collects a 100 plus model army knows that there's only so many things you can do to customize your force of 160 grots. Uh, I, I kept bashing converted and almost killed me 30 Phoenix Guard to be human in having Storm uh, Comet on their chest, having a whole bunch of things that made them very human. But with the Mega Gargans, it's different. I could convert and kit bash and make some stupid things, but it makes sense. I picked up the army. I've run them now, and I've run them for 10 games. So uh, at this time of recording, I think the army's been out for about two months, uh, less than two months probably. We've only recently just had the FAQ. But I've now run the army, and it is probably some of the most fun I've had in the game. Uh, spoiler alert: I'm also I've also won six out of or seven out of ten games. So they are competitive. They have do have hard counters, so it's not just a hobby and a, a conversion force. They do have they do have a, a place on the table. They do do well. Um, they're not going to five and zero a tournament, but they but you will compete. And they are a lot of fun. Whether you want to draw from, like what I have done, I've drawn from Dungeons and Dragons lore, and you know you've got frost giants and storm giants and uh, fire giants, and um, there's so many different varieties of giants in Dungeons and Dragons that I drew inspiration from. Or you know you look at Game of Thrones, and you know the the White Walkers, or even the, um, the boys up in the north had a big giant. You know there's there's so much giant lore that you could bring that into Age of Sigma. And for me, I think it was just the opportunity to do something different. And I've got I've got Gargants holding endless spells as a weapon. I've got, um, you know, like I've got one holding Durthu's sword. Like I just imagine they've just picked up stuff and they're just... The trophies, just, isn't it? It's just trophies and fun. And it's just a, a wonderful story. Uh, I'd like to think that all 10 of my games so far... I haven't had a bad game. Um, none of my opponents have... There's been no, been no feel-bad moments. There has been no... Like, I've had a really bad time. Um, even when I got shot off by Cities of Sigma, Iron Drakes, and I got shot off by Carriage and Overlords, I still had a really good time. So, um, for me, it was cool models, had a good time, the rules reflect the law, and um, and they're competitive. They've got a competitive space. They're not 5-0 and o armies. They're not 0-5 armies. Um, they they have they have a place in the meta. So for me, that was what drew me to them. That's a good answer. And I think on well, your last point there, me and you have agreed on this. And the, before that, ourselves, our personal sort of favourite armies are the armies that don't go five and zero. Oh, just so you have a bit more of those challenge. And also personally for myself, probably my favourite games have been the games I lost or something because they've just been so close. And you haven't table on but. Talk more about the guard. Well, just just one more just yep. one more point to that, Mikey. I think this is important for any of your listeners who are listening. Um, that when you get an army that's a five and O army, and what, what what we mean by five and O army is that they're just really, really, really strong, and it's often the army who's winning the game, not yep. necessarily you as the player. And the risk that we've seen over a number of years is that it's a big pendulum. The pendulum will swing one way, and you're super competitive. Absolutely. Carriage and Overlords have, um, when they came out, they were really strong. Um, Slanish, when they came out, they were really <laughs> strong. But now, but then the pendulum swings the other way, and Slanish isn't isn't doing nearly as well because uh, Games Workshop increased the points, they change the rules, they make things harder for you, and it gets to a point where people shelf Carriage and Overlords for a good. 18 months it's only now that they're getting their second wind but if you look at any of the meta let's say 12 12 months after their initial release character are almost not around so that's for me why if it's if it's balanced in the middle of the the pack it means it's well written and it also means that you're unlikely to get big changes either big points adjustments and you can't run the force that you you really like to run or uh, you get hit with uh, allegiance or war scroll changes mm -hmm. that change the dynamic of the model or the army or the play style. Uh, depravity isn't nearly as, as much as what it used to be. So um, it's happened to a lot of armies. So just, 
I, I think for me, when I when I say this is a kind of a mid-table army, that's a good thing. That is a good thing. Yeah, I think you've um, you've made that point really well, and I think what that means is that if you've got a mid-table army, probably going forward in the future, if it's going to get worse or it's going to get better, it's probably going to sooner get better than get worse. You know, you're probably not going to have points increase, things like that. There's nothing worse than let's say you look at building a two thousand point force. And then you have your, your nice 2,000 point force and then six months later an FAQ comes out of John's handbook and go, I'm now 200 points over. That, that's annoying. That, so, I would say, look, look, very look, nice. I, I know this is not the... the, the I, I, I just, I'll bring this, this point home. Please because, do. Uh, Carrigan's copped it. Uh, Beast Claw Raiders, before they got re-amalgamated with the Dad Bod Ogre, uh, the Gut Busters, uh, Beast Claw Raiders and Stonehorns were crazy good and then they got smashed by a... A triple uh, triple nerf they got a points increase the, st the skeleton stone bones got changed and there was mm -hmm. something else and we didn't see stone horns for 12 to 24 months um so again like if you just think about the pendulum if you want to run your toys um a, a, an average army is really good and then you as a player with your experience your knowledge and your practice will get you to four and one five and oh um, the army shouldn't take you to five and oh uh it should be you and your skill knowledge in your your play style and your luck but hey let's get back into gargans because we're kind of going into a weird little rabbit hole but exactly um, no worries like, it's like when, when you look I I, I, I I guess i guess i'm passionate about this topic because when the gargans first came out there was a lot of rage that like oh this is the worst battle time ever it's I've, not it's not uh, yeah. it's straight up not I, I heard a lot of stuff like that as well it's like um so again to to also go off topic for example i personally love slaves of darkness if you take marauders out of that army, it's quite a it's quite a very balanced army, that sort of thing. There's quite again, we're not talking about marauders. You look at the battle tome, I remember reading the points and go Everything in here is quite fairly costed, if not a bit more expensive. Go, brilliant. That probably just means points are gonna go down. I can add more to my collection. And um it's an army where, you know, you put the time and effort in, you can really carry yourself forward because Myself personally, like if I was to play a, um, firstly, if I was to play one of those armies that basically just push you across the table, I feel like you're not really playing the game. But with that aside, let's stomp our way back into the Gargants. And stop, like we let's, say, it's... Let's stop. Exactly. Um, so uh, what would you say are the strengths of this army off the table? So this is talking sort of on the, the hobby side. And I know you have kind of mentioned this already you said it's great for conversions it means you can really spend the time on each model rather than having a hundred and uh was it 160 grots or 180 grots um but what would you say is their biggest strength would you say for example how do you find paint them do you find because you can spend more time on one is actually an army that doesn't take too long to paint or is it is am i wrong with that or what are your thoughts you're very wrong i'm you're very wrong so okay wrong. Uh, and, and you're so wrong uh, because there is a sheer crazy amount of detail. Um, so first off, from a hobby perspective, um, what are the strengths of the army? It's low model count. Um, my So I, I recently just come back from a, a, a two-day match play tournament in real life, um, and I had eight models on the table. Eight. So from a competitive play point of view, um, my deployment was crazy, crazy quick. Unpacking my army was crazy quick, so um, for, so that setup piece was just so relaxing. And I'll talk about more about the strengths on the actual battle uh, yep. table in a minute. But from a hobby perspective, when I look at these these gargants, both the mega gargants and the man crushers, um, the weakness is, is the man crushers all look the same. They're monoposed. They have some arm varieties. You can move their arms around. There are some different uh, combination of arms, but uh, and a couple of head varieties. But they're they're mostly monoposed. So um, for me, that was a weakness, but then also turned into a strength. It then asked me the question: How do I change the look of this? And it allowed me to explore green stuff. It allowed me to explore uh, kit bashing, and uh, I've got. I've got, I've got like so many years of of bits and pieces from other armies that um i just went into my bits box and go right what are some of these treasures that the mega gargans could have picked up along their way yeah. how do i make things special and unique what are some of the parts from other kits that i could use to make my gargans feel special 
I put out some shout outs to my community, whether it was my Facebook groups, my friends. I said, hey guys, anyone got some things they can contribute to my gargants, even if it's just shields. Give me a couple of shields and I can put different shields on their arms and their legs and stuff. Um, and the conversion opportunity, whether you go to a bit site, whether you go to, you know, get them from your friend, uh, I looked at them a little bit different to go, how do I make my gargants special and unique? Um, I'm a snowflake. I need something that you know, like they they're fine as themselves. If you don't want to go down this this kind of deep rabbit hole, but uh, you know, from uh, like who anyone who's seen me on Twitter, um, one of my gargants, my gatebreaker, has a shield. I've got a sh him holding a shield, but the shield is from the Stormcast Diaz, the um, the little teleporting kind of little like platform. Is that on the hoverboard? It's a shield. Yeah, the hoverboard. Yeah. That's literally the Gargan shield. I've gone in and gotten uh, my war stomper has gotten a um, double, double the double hand axe of corn uh, from the bloodthirster. Yeah. I've gone in and got the um, the plague club catapults, um, like swinging kind of like uh, flail. Um, I've just gone in and just try to find all these fun and different things. Whether it's endless spells, like like I'm looking at all the different endless spells, going, how do I incorporate? The big horn from Beast of Chaos. How do I incorporate? Um, there's just like there's just so many. Like I'm holding the um, the Aether Void Pendulum. I could be swinging a cow around. Um, like there's just so much crazy stuff you can do. And in a Gargan army, you can do it. To show me another army where you can go as crazy as you want. I've green stuff like beards and hair, and I've done. Uh, I'll be doing tattoos because the surface area is so large. It's very easy to do ta tattoos and could do very quite intricate tattoos because, again, quite a large space compared to yeah. a 25 or a 32 mil based model. So from a hobby perspective, the world is your oyster. It's a small model count. You can do anything you want ridiculous and it would completely make sense. I've put, seen people convert... Um, their gargants up using, you know, Durthu or uh, like half snake, like half Marathi snake, half mega gargant. Like is it's it, just, just to like say, just is insane it, things that are happening in the community. It's like um, Vince from Warhammer Weekly. He's done a lot of conversions of his stuff, hasn't he? As an example. Oh, Vince is just one of a million people. Like, you know, no offense to Vince. Vince is amazing. Vince's army is cool, but he's not the only one. No. There are people like Ricky Smith who have done some crazy cool stuff. Um, you just got to look at the Sons of Behemoth Facebook group or on Twitter, and people have looked at the Gargan kit and said, what does this army look like in all of the different realms? What does a death-based Gargan look like? And um, uh, there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's a gentleman called Tristan as well, uh, based in Canada, and he's a very big um, Tomb Kings player. He's, you know, OG Tomb Kings, and he has reimagined, like, the Nec Necro Sphinx into a mega gargant and it looks sick um but then i've seen people like my, my mate deke who has taken his kit and made it an undead kit yep. and has made a very zombified one so instead of the guts being like a big belly it's uh it's literally guts spilling out of the uh like a big gash wound uh in the belly and you know he's, he's kind of like cut out parts of the kit to make it very zombified um but then like like the like you could make it fiery, you could make it very storm cloudy. Um, the world's uh, oyster, Ricky isn't it? Smith's, With this. Like Ricky Smith's ones remind me very much of like the Game of Thrones ice gargan. So, um, I think the world is your oyster with this army. You do what you want to do, and it will look awesome. Yeah. Uh, I've seen no. I've seen people like convert like very nurgly ones with tentacles and you know using a great unclean one head and like just manipulating it and making it all very like tainted by chaos so if this is the kind of thing that inspires you or if you're looking at an excuse to um to just go ham on your army um this is, this is the this is the kit because the the other interesting thing about this is what you've mentioned about saying you can use you know endless spells you can use you no know, blood first reactors and you can also use smaller items like for example if you were to use a uh, a liberator shield you could make that into a part of its um loincloth or something but then you can use these ridiculous size models be you know like an endless spell because of the models themselves are ridiculous and um and like you've mentioned uh, like you said you know deke making it in a zombie fight and like uh, tristan making a more tomb king style one it's because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that every army can like ally in a mercenary as a uh, a mercenary giant. 
So it gives you an excuse to buy one. There is a mercenary as well. They they are restricted, so um, there are three named mercenaries, and um, destruction can have all four of all three of them, and um, and then one one per grand alliance. So um, order has the kraken eater, uh, but it's a named kraken eater. It's a little bit different. uh, We could talk about it, but yes, the every army can bring it in their force. Yeah, as I, I know that's sort of not more sort of talking about on the table, but I just thought it's like a, a collector's point of view. It's something you can get if you're interested. Um, I, th- I think it's I think it's interesting because um, you can ask yourself the question: What does this army look like in a different realm? Like, what does this look like if my army was based in Shimon? What does this look like? What is what does a realm of metal gargant look like? And uh, you might go in and go to Magnus the Red, which is a 40k big demon prince, and you could steal all the big armor plates mm. and make your Gargant, like Vince Venturella's, more mechanical, more uh, in metal. Maybe they're like Colossus from the X-Men, and they are literally metal. Uh, you know, you kind of like design it a little bit like it's it's all made up of metal. But then at the same time, it could be your Gargants are based in, uh, I don't know, Hish and they aren't far away from Teclas and one of Teclas's cities. So what does a Lumineth kind of Gargant look like? And, you know, I, I got some, uh, I went to a bit store recently and I ordered some parts from the uh, the Battle Cattle. So I could start bringing in the Battle Cattle Hammer or I could put in like the big armor plates from the top. And I think, again, I think that question of what does the Gargant look like in X, X City, X Realm, uh, X situation. What does a uh, Beast of Chaos Mega Gargant look like? What does a Stormcast Gargant look like? I think that that then just opens up a world of creativity and possibility, um, which is why I've been drawn by the Gargants. It's just I can do some crazy, stupid stuff. Exactly, and yeah, I, I think they were very good points, and it's good to hear your own personal experience there. And like you said, many other people in the community look them, you know. Look up Giants on Facebook, look them up on Instagram, you'll, you'll find, on Twitter, you'll find plenty. What would you say this army is from a beginner's point of view? Would you say this could be a good entry army or maybe not? Or what are your thoughts on that? I just thought that's a bit of an interesting question. Because, like you say, you can go mad at conversions, I... but you don't have to. So, like, if we talk I... not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 I, yeah, I get it. I think I'm just... I think, with respect, um, Mr. or Mrs. New Player, I think if you start your very first army with Gargants, you have a very steep learning curve. A very steep learning curve. Because one of the the biggest challenges or the weaknesses of the Mega Gargants or the Sons of Behemoth is that you only have 8 models or 10 models. Um, Whatever your combination is, I think at most, I think... Uh, I think you can get 10 models on the table. Yeah. So with 10 models, it means that every decision you make is either going to work for you or work against you. And one right, wrong move, you could lose one quarter of your army. And in an objective-based game, um, and when you've only got eight models on the table, and some of those scenarios have eight objectives, you can't afford to make a mistake. So... Um, the Gargans are a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot... Being such large models, they're very easy to paint. But they aren't forgiving on the table. I don't have any cheap bodies on the table that I can screen. I don't... You know, like, when I leave an objective... Uh, when I leave a Gargan on an objective, that's 200 points in one model. Um, if I get shot off the table or a battle shock, that's an expensive battle shock. So my advice probably would be make your Gargan army your second army... Find yourself an army that you can learn the foundations of the game. You can learn about screening, teleporting, objectives, movement, charging, retreating, the you know all the things about the game. I would highly recommend that probably first, then maybe Gargan second. But if you pick Gargans up first, cool. Just know that you've got a very steep learning curve um, ahead of you. Exactly, plenty of learning to do with that. Okay, that that's cool. So there is a lot of learning, and I would probably ask my opponents a lot of questions, like yeah. what could I do differently? Because the learning curve is just exponential. Exactly, especially if you're new. If you um, let's say you go to your local store and you, who knows, it's your first proper game with a sizable force, and and you lose it. Don't for any reason be afraid or put off by asking your opponent, 
what would you have done if you were playing my army? How, you know, how would I have replayed this battle? Because then, then you learn um, from that. And you only, myself personally, I only learn from my mistakes. If I, by chance, was lucky enough to only roll sixes and win all the time, and then I eventually had to rely on my own wit about a year later, it'd be absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. I still, I still ask my opponents. I still ask. Mm. And I, I, I might not listen to them all the time. <laughs> But it's always get it's, it's always good advice to it's always good to get different uh, uh, pieces of advice. Mm. You know, I, I did a show literally the other day, and um, uh, one of one of the people who are watching my game said, "Oh, you shouldn't have left one of your you know you shouldn't have left your Garkin off the objective." You know, I, I ran aggressive into the KO army, and whether he's right or wrong, it's irrelevant. It's just a different opinion. I go, "Oh, okay, maybe what would have happened here? You know, would my decisions be a little bit different? Uh, would the outcome have been different if I did this?" And next time in that situation, maybe I'll try to to do X instead of Y. Um, so I, I still, to this day, will ask my opponent, is there anything I could have done differently? Um, is there anything that I missed that maybe I should do in the future? Um, highly recommend doing that, no matter how skilled you are. Absolutely. Doesn't matter who you are, you've always got something to learn. Um, so with that, I know we sort of touched a little bit, but what would you say their strengths are on the table? So what are they uh, What are they good at, really? How do they play is really the question here. So there are, they are essentially, I think other people have described them as just monster trucks. Like they're just running around the table. Um, they have a very large presence on the board. So the Mega Gargans are, I think, 130 mil bases. So they're incredibly large both both in height and by width so they do take up a lot of space which is really cool uh it also then becomes challenging when you've got terrain or you know you try to retreat or do some objective based gaming um so the gargants themselves that's also a weakness because because they're so tall as well it means it's easier to shoot at them because you can't hide behind a piece of terrain so take that with a grain of salt but what are the strengths of the army so I, I mentioned very early that uh, they're very quick to deploy, very quick to um, to unpack. So that's a big win for me, who's been running 200, 100 models. It's don't must do be it. funner to move across okay. the board as well, surely. Well, yeah, let's get to that. Um, my hero phase is so simple compared to uh, some of the other armies I play against. Cities of Sigma and Gloom Spite, for example, have a lot of spells, a lot of buffs to cast. Um, a lot of wholly within ranges, a lot of, you know, 18 inch here, 12 inch here, 6, six inch here, 3 inch here. You know, you're, you're, you are remembering a lot of combinations, a lot of, you know, cuts on 7, a 6, a 5, the, a whole range of stuff. That's removed. Like, that Gargant stuff is just removed. I am good at moving, charging, combat. I do a little bit of shooting. Battle Shock isn't really a thing. Hero Phase really isn't a thing. Most of the time I might get a command point, happy days, but I mostly play in movement, charging, and combat. And for me, that's just the best. Um, from an objective play point of view, Gargans are awesome at objective play. Um, on average, uh, and I'm not talking about allies here, guys, don't ignore mercenary or allies. This is very specific to the, um, to the book, The Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it your small boys, your man crushers, are worth 10 points or 10, they count as 10 models on an objective, and a mega gargant counts as 20. Now you can increase that by taking one of the tribes, so the sub-allegiance tribes, uh, and you could make a small boy 15 or a big boy 30. Um, now when you think about a 130 mil base on an objective with a 6 inch radius around that objective point, and you have this big pie plate, this dinner plate sitting on it, uh, or even just tapping one part of the objective, it's very unlikely that you, that anyone will have more than 30 models around an objective for a mega target. Yeah, just... And if I, leave a, if I leave a small boy on an objective behind the, behind the lines and someone tries to teleport a unit of skinks, uh, canary, shadow warriors, whatever my teleport, my Gargant counts as 10 or 15, uh, depending on which tribe I take. It's very unlikely, again, that they're going to claim that objective. And once they're in combat, good luck to you, because the Man Crusher is just straight up fire in combat. Uh, I think the misconception is that the big Gargants do all the damage. 
they will soak up the damage. It's the small boys, it's the man crushers that do the damage and do a lot of damage. Definitely. And um, something I think is interesting to add on to what you said there is that, like I said, even you just got um, one man crasher on like a, a back objective and then you've got, you know, like 10 skinks or whatever come down, something, teleports down. But it's not like your man crusher is a 10 uh, one wound unit because you need to kill the entire giant. Is it 10? How many wounds? 12. Yeah. 12, so you 12 need to, wounds on a 5 plus. So you need to do all those 12 wounds to take away, if you like, those count as 10 models holding that objective. And then, and then lol, at the end, if you do happen to kill my Gargant, um, it will topple <laughs> over potentially and do D3 model wounds to the unit as well. So um, I had a, I, my, one of my games recently, I, had, uh, I was playing a Beast of Chaos army and they had a swarm of, of you know, models, lots of models, Ungors and Centigors. And I had one man crusher defending against a unit of 10, be, uh, what are they called? Um, they're not, they're, they're, maybe they were just gore. They, were just, they weren't un-gore, they, I think they were more gore, gory-like. Yeah. Um, and a, a unit of center gore. So it was like 20 models. And my one Gargant was defending it for about a good two or three turns. So um, so the potential is there. Uh, he's got, but, but one bad mistake and... I can I can lose it all. Yeah. So this is where I'm like it's a steep learning curve if you're not comfortable or knowledgeable with the way the game overall works. Yeah, but like I say, when you get those that basic understanding of the game and you get more experience with this army, your um your skill set's really only gonna improve and the army can really reward you for it. And um and I think that's a really nice note because I think before the giants or the sons of uh, behemoth Behemoth. when yeah when they came out um and people just saw pictures and like little glimpse of rules here and there going like well how are they going to play the objectives well they can do it turns out quite well and they have some really like uh shall we say defiant ability in the game of how they can play with objectives like for example you can you can kick an objective like the uh... i was literally about to start drilling <laughs> down to some of this stuff like um, yeah sure there's a there, there is a gargant called the kraken eater that allows you to if you're talking like then like what like that's some of the high level stuff guys this is the high level stuff yeah now when we start drilling down a little bit further there is a mega gargant called the kraken eater that allows you to kick an objective up to 2d6 inches in the hero phase uh there is a way to make that 3d6 uh, that's powerful because once an objective's moved, your opponent can't change that. The objective is there. Um, now, that then combines because some of the scenarios will have uh, a points value attached to the, to, the, um, to the objective depending on where it is on the table. So right now, for example, there might be an objective in my home base that's worth one point to me or four points to my opponent. If I move it into the center of the board, it becomes two points for us and there's no four points for my opponent. If I kick it into their territory, it's worth four points to me. So all of a sudden, if you think about you know denying an objective, making it harder, kicking it away from my opponent, um, changing the value, uh, moving it away, you were you were wholly within and you were kind of capturing it and now I've booted it away. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do with the Kraken Eater, but then you've got something called the Gatebreaker that can destroy terrain. It destroys faction terrain and terrain on the tabletop so you don't remove the terrain but the allegiance stuff is out of play so the bone type nexus can't make me a minus yeah. one to hit or cast uh you know i could destroy uh, uh sylvaneth wildwoods to stop them from teleporting from those woods i could destroy uh the the, the gloom ship uh the idk boat um could this also be close things to a like of course one i could stop them for the free cp so um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with their gargans that interact with the table differently than any other army. I was going to say, I'm trying to remember the name of it now, but is it is it called Overgrowing the Terrain feature that makes you like minus two to charge rolls? There's there's one uh, that does that, isn't there? In ta- is it Entangling? Entangling. Yeah, entangling. Is the, I think that's so. Can yeah, it nullify? Overgrown block line of sight. Can it nullify those generic? Trains. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, but in saying that, when you destroy a terrain piece, it does count as deadly. So, um, ah, okay. So it will count as deadly. But more importantly, if you want to stop your opponent from getting a piece of commanding terrain and getting additional yes. command point, you want to stop them from getting plus one to cast from uh, arcane. You want to stop, I said, the faction terrain. 
the the gloom spike gets coming back from their loon shrine or uh as i said flesh eater course getting their free command point from their, their throne or whatever it might be um you can destroy that stuff and then they can't use those rules and some armies are very tied to that allegiance terrain um nurgle nurgle with the uh feculate Narmor. They mm. use that to, to slingshot their army that's traditionally quite slow to make them really fast. Boom, it's gone. Two plus. Well, unwounded, but to roll of a two plus. See you later. Terrain piece is dead. Can't use it. Yeah, exactly. And then you're just causing another problem for your opponent to have to deal with. And something where, I don't know, first time they're fighting against Gargans, they, they might be, uh, uh, let's say, surprised by, by the sort of like um, very unusual things they can do. It, they, they interact with the table very differently. Mm. There is no gotcha moments. It's not like, oh, surprise, you can't do it now. Um, I'm not an advocate of that play whatsoever. But I think you ask very different questions that nobody has thought about. Um, like when, when Lumineth came out and Teclas can auto-cast, I think it asked questions like, holy crap, if I if my army is reliant on spell casting and I have these super casters like Teclas, like Croak, the question there becomes how does my army rely or do i not stop relying on magic gargans are now asking a different question does my teleporty units can they win against gargans or does that tactic need to change or does the unit now need to be a unit of 20 and not 10 um I can i handle x i also think they're, they're quite a good like you've said that almost a bit like if you know tournaments are back to normal i think at the moment um kind of a bit like a gatekeeping army a little bit like if your army can't really the the gargans pose a problem to a lot of um game winning strategies that armies have which is interesting it, i think it freshens up no i was gonna say because yeah, i think it, it has the potential like i wouldn't say they're a gatekeeper i'd say lumineth is a gatekeeper um i would not build against a gargant army like i wouldn't look at gargants like oh my god i'm gonna change my entire strategy i'm gonna try to handle gargants that i don't think i don't think that's possible but I think it does ask some different questions. Like, do I have the speed, if a Gargant was to kick an objective away from me, do I have the speed to go reclaim it? Um, can I, you know, can I, you know, can I take down a Mega Gargant? Because the other challenge is that um, if, a, if a Mega Gargant counts as 20 or 30, depending on which tribe you take, how quickly can I take down a Mega Gargant? And, or, um, uh, do I have enough bodies on the table to be able to challenge an objective against them? Um, because if I'm only running units of five liberators, as an example, I will never claim an objective. Uh, so I have to, my, my only strategy at this point is to kill the is to kill the whole army. So and that can be that can be tough. Because um, sorry, did you say it has thirty wounds or thirty five? The mega gargant. Uh, I oh, know, so, so the Mega Gargant has 35 wounds, but it counts as 30. Uh, sorry, it counts as 20 or 30 against an objective. Uh, so that... if, you take, take a tri if you take Take a Tribe, it's, it counts as 30. Uh, if, if you're just a uh, Stomper or a uh, Breaker Tribe, it counts as 20. But is they that... all have 35 wounds apiece for the Mega Gargants and yep. 12 for the Mare Crushers. Fantastic. So what I was saying with the 35 wounds, well, another thing I saw people say quite easily online goes, 35 wounds are 4-up save, well, that would die easily. I think some armies will, will struggle to chuck 35 wounds out very quickly to kill a Mega Gargant of an objective. Apart from, like we said, the, the ones who can go 5-0 and 0 quite easily, a lot of armies don't have that output in like one turn or two turns. I only, that's only, ever, so far I've played 10 games, it's only happened once, yeah. uh, or one game, and that was the uh, Cities of Sigmar army using the uh, Soul Screen Bridge with a unit of 30 Iron Drakes with a Warding King, a Rune Lord, a Sorceress to teleport with the Dark Shards to stab for the plus two. Um, so that combination, if you think about it, is, is probably close to a thousand points, yeah. if not more than a thousand points. And my Mega Gargans are under 500 points. So they're essentially spending half of their army to delete one Mega Gargan. So other than that, K KO didn't do that to me. They had to, it, it took them two, three turns to kind of take down a Mega Gargan. But uh, yeah, very few people have that concentrated power to bring down 35 wounds in one shot, in one go. Yeah, and like you say, until it's completely dead, it's going to count as those uh, 20 models, isn't it, for the objective, depending on what tribe you want to take in so I, I could i could be i could be on one wound left mikey i could be on one wound left 
and my model still counts as the 10, 15, 20, or 30. Yeah. Um, so, so if you want to win the objective against me, you've got to pull me down. Otherwise, um, I'm likely to be uh, overwhelming you. Okay. The only thing that I also want to say about objective play for them, I just want to sort of hear your thoughts on it. We don't have to talk about it for too long or anything, but in the latest, well, I say the latest, the only FAQ that's came out for them so far, the objective, yeah. I mean, like, I'm going to say that if I played against that, I don't think that would be a great play experience, but I don't know if that's going to change at some point in the future. So I don't really want to talk about it too much, but I just want to acknowledge that that ability exists currently at this moment in time. So so what Mike is referring to here, guys, uh, he's dancing around it. I'll be straight up. Please, what please do. About. I didn't want to say it. You do it. Uh, so there is a rule that uh, we Gargant players are feeling a little bit uncomfortable with. Uh, it's not a position that we wanted to be in because um, the last we just want to have fun with our army, man. We just want to we want to have a, an honest game. Uh, we just want to bash it out, have some fun, roll some dice. It's why you play not, the Gargants at the end of the day. It's not the intention. It's not the intention. But there's one particular rule that's come up for contention at the moment, and that's based around objectives. And, and I, I could probably bring up the, the exact ruling um, if I if I um, if I could. But essentially, what it talks about here is that there is um, there are some there are some scenarios where. A, a gargant can activate their um, their ability. I'm just trying to find the exact. Um... Ah, here, cool. Uh, this is this is the designer's note. So, the, so uh... yeah. So, so the question is. Um, so it says the. So this is all in the FAQs um, as yep. of November 2020. That says the designer notes on mightier makes rightier. So that's the counting as 10, 15, 20, or 30. Um, so the, that's 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 called mightier is rightier. So it says uh, when in the designer notes of, of mightier is rightier, it states that the battle plans um, that do not follow the normal rules for controlling objectives. So an example that they use is places of arcane power. Um, uh, does this mean, for example, that in that particular battle plan? I could contest the objective with a friendly man crusher unit, even though that it doesn't have the, the leader battlefield role? And the answer is yes. So where that comes into play then is, is coming down to what the community said, shutting your opponent out. It's like, well, if you can't contest the objective, so for example, um, it just needs to be cleaned up. Yeah. It just okay. needs to be cleaned up. I think... At the moment, I'm not going to go deep into it because I think every tournament organizer may resolve this differently. But as it stands, um, it's an interesting challenge that we need to get around. So um, basically what it means is there are some scenarios where the Gargans can shut down the ways that you score as the battle plan is written and you score by the Gargans ruling. Then that becomes a challenge because then you essentially stop your opponent from scoring altogether. Um, because you, you in, in places of arcane power, for example, um, which only leaders can score, you then shut that out and go, well, the rules aren't there anymore. You're now playing by my rules and stiff shit, you can't win. So it, it needs a further clarification. But I think... Uh, if you are, if, if sh should a scenario like Places of Arcane Power pop up in your tournament pack, uh, I would definitely clarify the ruling with the tournament organizer. I think that's probably the best answer I can give right now because I think we're all trying to work it out and trying to work out a best result. Um, and nobody wants to feel bad. I don't want to look exactly. at my opponent as we deploy and say, hey, I'm going to shut off the rules to this objective. Uh, you can't win at all. Good game. Like, nobody wants that. So... Um, I'm not going to dwell on it too much because the I think we'll work it out as a community. But exactly. if you shoot something like Place of Arcane Power pop up, just go and chat to your TO. Ask how they're going to rule it. Yeah, exactly like that. I just wanted to mention it because I know if I don't, someone will say in the comments, why do we not talk about it? Because it's a big yeah. strength. But like we said, and I think what you said was good, Like if it's in a tournament pack and it hasn't been resolved by the time most people play in tournaments again, just, just ask your, your TO. You do not want to be in a position on, on the table with your opponent going, so are you going to allow me to change the objective? Ask your TO. That's done. That's that bit. We can put that in a box now. That's out of the way. Um, cool. So uh, with... I, think, I, think, I think you might find tournament organizers will just avoid some of these scenarios now. Yeah. I think straight up as a tournament organizer, I can't be bothered dealing with this. There's not many, um, is there? Because right. you can't, right now, you can't win either way. 
um, you, you, you just can't eat, win either way. It can't be so. I would probably just avoid scenarios like places of arcane power as a tournament organizer. So, um, so yeah. But like, who knows? Hopefully, this will be clarified soon. Exactly. Um, so with that, what would you say are their weaknesses on the table? So we talked about what they're good at and how their play style is, but what do they struggle with, Anthony? Cool. Um, so, good question. So from a hero, hero phase point, if we go through the different phases. Um, so from a deployment phase, um, I think their weakness is, is that they don't have uh, any battalions. So uh, it's very, it, it's impossible to get under a four drop. Um, you just straight up can't be, so anything like change host or anything that's under three drops, um, you can't determine the battlefield. Um, you, because you don't get um, any battalions, it also means you don't get the extra command point. Um, so you can only buy one command point and you don't get the second artifact. There is one way to get, there's a couple of ways or one way to get an initial artifact, but uh, and mostly you've only got one artifact. So you're quite restricted. From a list construction point of view, that then means that there is a limited variety of ways you can build your Gargans. Um, it's not nearly as diverse as every other army. But in saying that, we have five War Scrolls technically, so. Yeah, five um, and two kits, haven't you? Yeah. Well, technically, so when I say technically, I'm also talking about the Forge World Bone Grinded Gargant. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Forge World have a big, big Gargant um, that's been around since the dawn of time. That has been brought into Suns, and so technically we have five. We have the, the Kraken Eater, the War Stomper, the Gatebreaker, the, um, what I just said, the um, the Bone Grinder mm -hmm. Gargant, and then the Man Crusher. And then you could take, then talk about uh, three, the, the three uh, mercenaries, but... You would never take the mercenaries probably in a sun's army. Um, so you've, you've technically got five war scrolls to play with and then build a list around. Um, there are three tribes, so there are three sub allegiances. Uh, each of them rewards you to build your army in a certain way. Uh, the Kraken Eater is probably the most diverse. Um, it's probably the most mixtured um, army, in my opinion. That's really good for objective play. The, by the way, the tribes, the different tribes, the Stomper, the the, the Breaker, and the, um, the well, I've forgotten the other one, just Stomper, crap, Stomper, uh, uh, well, uh, What are the two you said? What are the two you said? And I'll see if I can get the third uh, one. That's right. You've got Taker, Stomper, and Breaker. Okay. So you've got the three tribes, right? Yep. Um, so the way that you kind of work that out is based on um, who's going to be your general. So if I go Taker tribe, I've got to have the Kraken Eater as the general. If I go break a tribe, I've got to be the gate breaker as the general. If I take the stomper tribe, you take the war stomper tribe. So um, I couldn't I couldn't start my stomper tribe as a kraken eater general. It's got to be a uh, war stomper. And then when you start looking at the rules, each of the tribes rewards you to go a certain way. Doesn't restrict you. You can do it if you want, but it rewards you a certain way. So the stomper tribe probably reward you for taking a war stomper mega gargant and then lots of man crushes and and there are a lot of cool re rules there probably the, the the one big rule that really rewards you doing this is that um they have an ability where you can chuck rocks um it's all right it's okay you know you get d3 attacks per gargant hits on a four wounds on a three rend one for d3 damage and the way that works is it's it's an ability not a well it's an ability shooting attack so you can't use it when your gargants run but what it does mean so basically you uh, at the start of the shooting phase uh, your, your mega gargant can tell one of the units to throw rocks uh but in the stomper tribe you can choose everyone within 18 or 24 inches so basically it rewards you for having lots of small gargants uh, and obviously the button and a lot of the other buffs are probably more focused towards the small boys gatebreaker is probably again probably you're probably running two gatebreakers in a in a, a breaker tribe uh, and then as i said the kraken eat is probably a mixture um i run two mega gargants six small boys in uh in a in a taker tribe but uh it doesn't mean you have to but it's just uh it does kind of reward you to go a certain way um but so that's kind of like from mm -hmm. from from that side of the fence that sounds 
it's partially a weakness because you are relatively restricted compared to, again, some of the other armies. I go to Cities of Sigma, or I go to Glimpse by Gits, I go to uh, Flesh Eater Courts, I go to any of my other armies, and I'm not nearly as restricted in my list building as Gargants have. Like, there's just so many, so little choices. Yeah, it, and like you say, a large point of that comes down to the model range, but I presume if you're, if you're choosing this army, interested in this army, you love those models enough for it to not really be too much of a, uh, of a problem. I just want to say something that I've noticed because I've only fought one game against them, so take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, I found uh, when I was fighting them, they had uh, they had great rend generally across the board that allowed their damage to get through. But I found them to be quite swinging on their attacks. There were a few um, on some of the high damage weapons. I think like hitting on fours and that sort of thing. And there was like D three, but like, but what I'm trying to say is that an army that looks like it's I know you can completely disagree with me, but I'm only laugh, that I'm I thought was going to hit me completely off the table. I'm laughing because that is destruction. If you play destruction, okay, yeah. regardless of who in destruction, it is a consist inconsistent swing. Um, so they do a lot of damage. Um, they could do D6, flat mm -hmm. three, Ren two, Ren three, three inch attacks. Um, some very they could do some crazy damage, right? But they are inconsistent, and it's very hard to get. Um, it's very hard to do damage. There's some times where I'll blow my opponent off the park, but there's also times where I'll just whiff. It's pretty a big attack, like my um, uh, the 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 little boys have a, a headbutt, and the headbutt when the mm -hmm. when a gargant isn't a small boy when it's not wounded is four damage. Um, it's crazy, but hit, I think it hits on a four, wounds on a three, or when hits on a three, wounds. That's on a three. the one that always so, missed me. That's what I'm talking about. Well. Yeah, like it's inconsistent. So when it hits, it hits like a brick brick hit shit house. But if it doesn't hit, like you've just whiffed a damage four attack. So it is inconsistent. You're 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 throwing rocks, it's D three. Fours and threes ren one for D three. I, I could roll a one, I could roll three. I could hit, I could do three damage, I also could not. Um so I think I think what you need to appreciate with Gargans is that is that when you look at their attack profile it's only one part of the damage output of Gargans. You do have some other damage output from the Gargans. One is charging. So when they charge, they all do D3 or D6 damage, depending on who you're charging against and what you're charging. So they'll do mortal wounds on the charge, which is pretty sweet. Um, majority of the Gargans have an ability to basically, the old rule used to be stuff them in the pants. I think it's now stuff them in the bag. Um, and basically, you can pick a mo you can pick up to three models. Again, I think the small boys is only one. The big boys are D three, and they can basically pick out a model uh, within a certain range, whether it's one or three inches. And on a dice roll that is equal or uh, so doubles doubles or greater the wounds characteristic, yes. the model is slain. So because it's at an individual model level. It means if there is a, uh, if I'm fighting, let's say, uh, a unit of, I don't know, Mortet Guard or um, uh, Lumineth with um, with their little magic hero, uh, the the unit champion, which is also the magic caster in the Sentinels or the Wardens, I can literally pick that that, that model and pull and pull it out. Uh, if there is a banner in there that gives them pluses to bravery, if there is a special weapon that does mortal wounds on a six to hit, I can literally pick that model out and say it's gone. Um, so with a one wound model, it's a two plus on a, uh, a two wound model. It's a four plus on a three wound model. It's a six or more. So, um, um so, uh, that's, that's another cool little damage, um, dealing ability in addition to the, the damage profile. And you can break unit coherency with that, can't you? You can, you can. I, I'm not a fan of it. I don't like, I don't, I'm not that person that goes, lol, there's an inch between those two, there's more than an inch between those two models, delete half your units. Um, I lost 20 it's models. Because yeah, I didn't, it's not I didn't stack it properly. It, it is there. So if you break coherency and the opponent can't pile in, um, that, so, and you can do that, for example, that, you can't really do it with the man crusher. It's a lot harder with the man crusher because you can only pull out a model within one inch. So um, uh, unless you do unless you do the attack sequence at the very end where you deny your opponent from piling in because they've already piled in, um, 
yeah, like you want to, if you want to do that tactic, you got to do it at the very end to deny them from piling in. So, but again, I, I don't. Yeah, I, don't like I know. I just that, again, I have to mention these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, <laughs> so you have to get to a unit of Phoenix Guard, and you pull out a model, and the opponent can't pile back in. Uh, that that unit, the half of that unit, will just be automatically slain because they are broken coherency, and there's no way to bring them back if they've already piled in and attacked. So, yeah, it's there. Similar to like what Mortec crawlers can kind of jankly try and do and stuff as well but um yeah okay so would you say i obviously this is more of a summary but those are kind of their weaknesses like you say like they're not huge on magic this army are they i a, there, there is now one way to get magic it was a bit janky before the faq there's better word uh, in there, there, right? is a, there is an artifact called the glowy lantern uh, the other way you can actually bring in a wizard is by um bringing it as 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 it is right now um, we did lose a whole bunch of mercenaries from uh, Malign Sorcery, but Forbidden Power mercenaries are still in play. So I can bring in Flesh Eater Courts and I can bring in Fire Slayers. So if I did want to bring in an Arch Regent, for example, to bring in a Magic Caster, or in Take a Tribe, take the Glowy Lantern Artifact, I can be a wizard. So I could bring in Cogs to speed up the Force. I could bring in some other type of Magic, but in most cases, you just don't play in the Magic game. So um there's not a lot of mortal wound saving uh not a lot of unbind so but the cool thing as well is that um uh you can like if someone casts like uh storm uh, shackles or they cast the uh warp lightning vortex which would trap you in uh you can step over it so um there's a rule called the long shank so that's uh you can basically step over the endless spell now yeah it's good they're, they're giants they've got huge legs they can stand over things i like yeah that um that's good and i was just going to say like just just a quick couple of things don't have any deep striking right like as a that's just a no no, no. yeah there's exactly. no, there's no, if one of them can hide no. behind a tree fair play don't get me wrong you can... big big tree big tree but what they do have is um a rule that we haven't spoken about yet that i use a lot mm -hmm. uh and that is that uh a man crushy gargant can run and charge if it is within eight, within twelve inches of a mega gargant, at the start of charge phase. So okay. what it means is that, um, and it's not wholly within; it's just within. So uh, if I, the, the the small boys only run, they only move eight, uh, while the big boys move anywhere between ten and twelve. So what it does mean is that to get my and, and the man crushes, as I've already mentioned, do most of the damage compared to the the yep. big boys. The big boys, for me, are really there to soak up the damage unless you... Well, I take... Uh, the way I look at it is I try to do most of my damage from the man crushes, and because the big boys are counting as 30, I just want to I I buff up the small boys and just keep claiming that objective and make it harder for my opponent to get the objective because by the time the man crushes are through, it'll be very hard to have 30 models on the objective. So I'm just playing the long game. I'm accumulating points over time, that hopefully by turn three and turn four, I have such a big lead that you just can't catch up. And that ha and that's where most of my wins have happened, is by I just have too many victory points. And by turn, t turn four and turn five, as my army is starting to crumble, the lead is just too great. Yeah, that, that's cool. And just a quick one also, do you have many like mortal wound saves in the army? I'm just thinking of like generic weaknesses. No, that that's fine. Um, no, I don't, I, there's no, there's no real. Ma there is a couple of ways to get magic. Yeah. Uh, I think there might be one way to get like a mortal wound save. I, 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 have, to, I have to have a look exactly on the. That, that's okay. Just. Um, the... But there are ways to like increase the wounds. So I can make my kraken eater, for example, forty wounds instead of thirty-five. Yeah. Um, you're there, so there you're are... very tanky, aren't you, in this army with your the They're amount of wounds? Tanky. Yeah. They're that... very tanky. Uh, the profiles don't degrade as aggressive as other behemoths, so I don't really start degrading so with my mega gargants i don't think i degrade until at least my my um wound 13 and one of the ways that i've kind of got around this as well is i've gone out and taken the realm artifact from shimon the plate of perfect protection so i ignore rend oh ignore rend one i ignore rend one so it means that i'm just more durable and i'm staying around a lot longer it's a bit of shooting protection mm -hmm. as well um there are some ways to do it, but I think the the in in the gargant's mind, the best 
uh, defense is offense. Uh, it's using the speed of the army to get in your opponent's face early. Um, you can play KG. I played a um, uh, an ever chosen Slaves to Darkness based Archeon and a couple of units of Varengard. I played an army like that not long ago at the tournament as well, and I played very janky. So uh, knowing that most of his army was under five models, mm-hmm. I avoided combat like the plague and just try to like keep tagging uh, objectives and try to claim early, um, because I'm not Iron Jaws, I'm not Beast Claw Raiders, I'm not Grizzle Gore, so I don't have the damage output as those guys but I have the objective play. And if anyone knows Warhammer strategy, you always hear hammer and anvil. Um, your your mega gargants are your anvil. They're there defensively to soak up damage. Yes, they can do damage, but they're, they're, they're there to soak it up and just tie up your opponent for a long time while they're not scoring. Your man crushes are your hammer. To get in, they, they, they'll, they'll take a big hit. They'll, they'll smash a hit. Uh, but with with a armor save of five plus, they don't stay around too long. So you need to really buff them up with rerolls to hit the mortal wounds on the charge, the stuffing in the pants, um, all of that stuff to make them more survivable, um, because they won't take the hit nearly as well as they give it. That, that's fair enough. They all have to weakness somewhere, don't they? These armies. So I think I think we're doing a good job there, sort of covering like the the main sort of points to talk about. Um, on weaknesses and now that we've talked about the strengths as well as mentioned at the start of the video if you want to have um, a bit more knowledge like on this army as we mentioned other armies as well go check out the aos coach He's done plenty of um, talks with people who play the armies many a times um, but now i just want to go into some subscriber questions so we only have a few questions uh, a couple of them are the same as well so uh, not really too long but one of the ones actually repeated twice is um so this is from uh Wat uh, Mackie and uh, Daniel Howard basically asked the same question, saying that which army would benefit from taking a Mega Gargan? But then the second, like as a uh, mercenary, and then the second part of this is asking, are they actually worth taking as a mercenary? And I think that's probably more the point we should focus on because if we're talking again, if you want to play whatever army you want, you want to just have fun, play the models you want. Exactly, that's always going to be an answer. But so more specialisers are talking about in a competitive sense. And um, I mean, from an outsider's point of view, I would probably say for most armies, they're not worth taking. What are your thoughts as someone who's had actually experience with using these models? But I know you've used them in the Allegiance, so you haven't like taken a, a Bone Reaper army I, and allied them in. I, I've, got some, I've got some ideas. Um, I do have some cool. list ideas. Um, and so to answer your question, this is very, so I, 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 I had this come up a lot. Um, a lot of my subscribers has asked me the same question. They said, Anthony, uh, should I buy a mega Gargan and which one should I get? Or should I bring it as a mercenary? So to answer that question, I'm going to ask you a question, you, the listener, the question, not Mm -hmm. you, Mikey, the host, it's you, the listener. Um, now, obviously, if you are doing this for a narrative, then ignore this. You know, I'm, I'm talking purely from a competitive sense. Uh, you do you, you know, do your own hobby. I'm not here to shame you on making a bad choice. But if you're going to spend 500 points on a model, and I, I, I'm using that, that's arbitrary, like the, the, the points do vary, but essentially you're paying 500 points. If you're investing one quarter of your army into one model, what does it do and do you have something in your army that can do it better and when i say better i'm talking about the fact that you don't get the rule mightier is rightier so you your your mega gargans if it's a mercenary doesn't count as 20 or 30. you don't get that your mega gargan counts as one it's only under the sons of behem at sub allegiance or allegiance that you get the counts as 20 10 15 30. Um, that's 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 for us only. So, of the three, and they are they are named characters, so you don't get the um, oh, you don't get the sense. ones. That, yeah, it's very. Uh, I think one's called like Bodie McBoatface. No, it's not. He's not called that. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to furiously look for the War Scrolls on, while, while I'm talking to you. But of the three, I would Sorry. probably only take the Kraken Eater variety of the of the mercenary, for the reason of the kicking of objectives. So uh, if, if I think about who can take that model, uh, all of Destruction can take that model and Grand Alliance Order can take that model. So 
Um, and the reason for it is I could kick, uh, I, I could take that me that mega gargant and kick an objective behind a big wall of a hundred grots. Uh, I could kick it behind a unit of thirty phoenix guard. Good luck trying to handle a mega gargant getting it uh, away from uh, a unit of phoenix guard or whatever it might be, some durable super tanky unit. Um, but it is 500 points. That 500 points could buy me a Star Drake. It could buy me a. Uh, it could almost buy me two Dreadlords and Black Dragons. It could get me uh, a uh, an Ironclad. It could get me uh, close to two Durthus. It could get me an Alariel and almost a Marathi. So when we're talking about Marathi versus a Man Crusher, or so a Man Crusher, uh, uh, a Mega Gargant, what role do you want it to play? What does it do, and can you do it better? Because you're not going to get any of your allegiance rules. You know, yeah. your allegiance buffs aren't going to help. But I was just if I have a, a, kind of a terror guys, if I have an option for, um, if I need something to soak up damage, I think the question is, is what do I have? And can I do a similar role naturally? Yeah. Because I think, like you say, um, oh, what's it called? What's the, um, you've already just mentioned it, but. Uh, Mightier is greater. What was it called again? Uh, Mightier is rightier. Mightier, so, rightier. So um, with that, that, that's that's the rule. That if that if that rule, uh, Mikey was on their war scroll, exactly. My conversation would be very different because that that's but because that's the tasty nice bit of the of that model, isn't it? Of how it can work in the game. And I think um, what you've said is like you know, do you have something already in your army that can do the role you want to use a mega gargant for? Because I think if, let's say Sons of uh, Behemoth came on, well, came out about a year ago, two years ago, it would be a different story. But because every book, I don't care if it's a first edition Battle Tome or pretty much all second edition Battle Tomes now, every um, army has a, has a Battle Tome. So every army has a lot of inherent synergy that I know when I'm building lists, and it doesn't matter if it's an army I personally own or it's an army I've looked at list building for the channel videos and stuff, I'm not really too many points below 2,000 when I'm like, yeah, I've got everything, I've got all my synergies and I've got everything right. How many points have I got left over? Maybe about 100. Like, it's very rare I go, yep, yeah, that's that's a cohesive force I have there and I have four to 500 points spare. Why not put in a Mega Gargan? Again, we're talking on sort of a competitive level, but I know of like Slaves of Darkness, for example, which is an army I've been working on a lot lately. I can't, I can't get enough uh, enough points, and I certainly can't get enough leader slots in the army as a. Um... And I think the other thing to remember as well is by taking a mercenary, you sacrifice your first command point in the battle. Oh, so of your course, round one yeah. command point, yeah. your round round one command point disappears. So not only do you look, if I had a mega gargant as an ally or as a mercenary in my stormcast army. Um, it's great. I just put it on the table. He runs forward. He does his thing, and I don't have to worry about it. I put all my buffs, all my command points. I do other stuff elsewhere. It's set and forget, which is cool. But then, like I mentioned, you ask yourself the question: Is that what if I put those five hundred points into a Star Drake? What if I put those five hundred points into, like I mentioned, a, a Terror Geist, a Moor Crusher, a Stonehorn? Uh, like depending on which army you play and where yeah, you're yeah. from, um, I think. I think you sort of ask yourself, why am I taking this Gargant? What does it bring into my force? And do I have a role that's similar elsewhere? Now, I think for me, that answers the question. So for some forces, um, it's a straight up nut. Nah, I've just got naturally, I've got it much better in my army. Um, for some people who are really lack, lacking an anvil, who are really lacking um, rend, maybe they do a lot of mortal wounds, but they don't have a lot of rend and they're having a real tough time with certain armies then yeah maybe this is the way to go um yeah that's fair enough answer i think really this is quite a like we said we've we've talked about you know uh competitive match play sense why you'd have it in your army every other part is is up to you would you like to buy build work paint one and put it in your army that that's a conversation for you to have it yourself really i think um so thank you for uh... and, as, and as we said as well like for anyone who's like got a narrative or you know oh, it's yeah. a slave gargant or it's following them for food or you got some cool narrative or you've converted it up because you know you wanted a i don't know whatever it might be cool you do you you do your hobby this we're, we're talking from a a match play competitive i want to go to a tournament i want to do well should i take a, a gargant as a viable 
spend of one quarter of my army points. One quarter. Yeah. That's, that's fair enough. Um, okay, so then the uh, last question we have from Eisenwolf666. So he, he's asked a couple of questions, but the first one we've basically answered, because the first question is one I actually asked you earlier, which is, are they a beginner-friendly army? And I think we've we've basically covered that. You know, if you really want to dive in with these guys, you can, but it is a bit of a steep learning curve. So maybe... It is a very... Yeah. It's a very steep learning curve. If you took... Um, so probably the most equivalent army... I, I won't go too much on this topic, but we already talked about it. But the most equivalent uh, army out there like this would be a... Um, uh, an ogre more tribe specifically a beast claw raider build so you could have a you could have about 10 to 12 models on the table whether they're stone horns thunder tusk mourn fang pack when you go pound for pound sons of behemoth versus that type of um ogre more tribe build i think ogre more tribe build wins every day they're faster they're more durable they probably my, my half of my allegiance ability is like stuffing me in the pants just doesn't work i can't stuff a, a 12 wound 14 wound model in my pants so uh and they do more more wounds on the charge so i think pound for pound they're a lot more for, I, I would definitely say if you want something like that i would go ogre more tribes first but if you did pick it up because this is your love and you just want to have you just want this army uh your mum your wife bought it for christmas you bought it for yourself whatever it might be um play but you will probably lose a lot of games before you learn what you're doing and for a lot of opponent and I'm, and I'm being very blunt because that's the type of experience that people will just go this game's too hard i'm not doing very well and then they shelve the army or they might even move away from sigma altogether and obviously that's the experience that i don't want so uh, i'm being very ruthless by saying no because i want you to stay in the game for a long time exactly and this is an army that's you know until like a long long way away for some reason it's going to be in the game you know you can always i know it's quite hard because we're all a bit like hobby butterflies want to do one army after the next but this army will be here for when you want to go to it so don't don't pick up one about. scratch scratch pick up one scratch the itch yeah uh play with it or, or, or buy the full army as your next kit once you've built up your because you also like you you don't learn how to paint if you're new to Sigma and maybe you're new to wargaming altogether, you're not a very good painter. You're probably learning a lot of techniques. And you don't want to have these awesome kits that you wish you would have done later because I, I now know how to paint eyes. I now know how to wet blend. I now know how to pick up details and edge highlight. So uh, there's also there's a really good reason to wait for that um, the Gargans is your second army. Cool. Fantastic. Um, and then here's... Next question is, is a little bit different. I think we can we can do it quite quickly. Um, and it's essentially how are they perceived by other players in the sense of apparently when 40k introduced into pure knights back in the day, many people viewed them as a unfair or even a cheesy army. So I, as as I can say from someone who's an outsider, I don't play the army, so I think probably this is kind of directed at me. Um, I, I don't have a problem with them. We've mentioned some. A little bit of jankiness they just need to smoothen off with like objective play but apart from that um i've only fought against them once and it was a great it was a great fun experience you know that there are awesome models on the table even if it was on table simulator and um they just i think they play a fun game and they bring some stuff to your games that other armies can't like you said destroying you know um scenery pieces getting rid of the effect kicking objectives it just it brings as a uh, opponent to the army it changes up what I would usually play against. That's what I can say from my, my point of view. I, I'm, I'm no 40k player, so correct me guys in the chat, uh, or ch put it on my channel, or maybe put it in this channel, whatever, like rage at me, whatever. Um, but from my understanding of the way that the um, the 40k Imperial Knights or the, you know, the Knights got introduced to 40k, I believe the issue often came from the, the, the shooting, the shooting output and the some of the manipulation, the cheese that came about the movement in combination with the buffs, in combination with the shooting. And because of because of some of those durabilities in combination to the sh shooting output of the knights, um, I think there was a lot of uh, a lot of FAQs, a lot of um, nerfs, a lot of house rules that came about because everyone just started running Imperial Knights. Um, the Suns are a little bit different because we're not playing that durability game 
Yes, we have a lot of wounds, but the Mega Gargant only has a five plus armor save. Um, the small boys only have a sorry, sorry small oh, big boys have four. Have, big boys have yep. a four. Small boys have a five. So when you think about that, any form of rend will pull down a Gargant quite quickly. It can pull out a Gargant quite quickly. Um, I, I played my last game uh, was up against a OBR list that had two Mortec Crawlers. Now, they, they, they don't have any rend, but they do flat five damage. And I think they do three shots apiece. And two crawlers were going straight at my um, my Mega Gargant, like hitting, a, you know, some really cool buffs, reducing and, and making rerolls. But if I if I failed that armor save, that was five damage, and that could pull a Gargant down pretty easily. So any form of rend will make my life hard. There's no real way to regenerate wounds. There's no real way to ignore rend. There's no invulnerable saves, or uh, as 40k would say, but there's no like uh, damage prevention rolls. So they're not as durable as I think the knights were, and I think they've learned a lot of lessons from the knights. And the 40k and, and Sigma and 40k are different. Yeah. Sigma is primarily a combat game. Uh, 40k is more of a shooting game. So I think they are two different beasts, and I think they've learnt from their mistakes of the Imperial Knights. So. My overview, just from every opponent I've played, I've played 10 games, as I mentioned already. I've got people lining up at the door waiting to play. They want to they want to experience Gargant. I think people are excited yeah. to see what their army can do with a Gargant. At minimum, they're like, it's like a, it's like a gladiatorial test. Like, I want to test my might. How good is my army against these big boys? Um, and it's cool, right? If you're the opponent, you manage to slay a few big giants. You know, it's, it's a cool game. Oh. Oh, look, I've, I've been going around trying to destroy terrain pieces because it's funny. <laughs> and I'm also trying to kill people. Like, I, I left Archeon on three wounds. It kills kills me. I left Gordrak on one wound and it kills me. Uh, I want to kill Marathi. I want to kill Nagash. I want to kill, you know, I've got, I've got a big hit list. But at the same time, everyone's looking at me going, I want to take down that Kraken Eater. I want to take down that Gatebreaker. And, and that test, I think people are enjoying. Um, not not one person has has looked like they've had a bad time with me, whether they won or lost, um, and yeah, I th- I, the rules aren't janky. Um, I think the, the kicking of objectives is an interesting one, and I think some people are like, "How do I handle that?" But at the same time, I kicked an objective recently, and it went three inches. So I'm mm-hmm. like, well, it's not really. It's, Cause cool, three it, inches. It goes. Is it one d six? And there's a way to make it go three. It's, it's two. It's two. No, it's two d six. Yep. Um. So t- statistically, the average is seven. Um. Which is not enough, really. Like it's, it's, ra- it's random. It's all hell, isn't it? You can. You know. It's random. It's all hell to be called janky. I'd say. Like seven you can't inch, rely on like, it. On average, seven inches. Yep. Like. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's it's fun it's though. Still in my territory. It's. All right. Exactly. It it can be it can, it can be good, but it, it's more it's more for fun than anything. Um. So, and then the only sort of like uh, last sort of like add-on question we've got is um, it, it, it's talking about price of the army. And we, we mentioned this earlier, and I'll be honest, so my, my first thoughts when I see, I understand down in Australia, it's a lot more expensive than it is for me here in the UK. So I, I'll hold back when I talk about this. But when I first saw them for, if you're buying from Games Workshop, in the UK anyway, £120, I was a little bit concerned because like Archaeon was the pinnacle, £100, and then Technus came out, what broke the £100 market, and then a few weeks later, £120. So I'm like, I don't know how far they're going to continue this um, big expensive prices for big models. But what I, so like, I was a little bit taken aback by that. But what I will say is how you've, explained it as in you know you, you don't need many of these models in the army compared to some others it's not as expensive as some luminef builds i've seen out there but i still think for myself anyway like i don't like where games workshop is going with the uh pricing but this that's a i feel like a completely different conversation and a different topic. so what what's what, what's the question is is it about how do i feel about the prices so well the, the question was tagged on to um Eisen's uh, question of is it a beginner friendly army and then um, yeah. we've got uh, someone who's replied saying that you know it it depends how you feel because you know is it beginner friendly with the price cost of um, uh, what's he got about 300 euros for uh, what's it, um, one mega garden free small how about I just acknowledge the pricing 
Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I think is what kind of where we're going to this. So, begin first off from a beginner point of view, and another reason why I would not suggest this to beginner. If you're a beginner, you probably don't have a lot of experience with this game, whether it's tabletop, um, tabletop wargaming in general. Uh, maybe you've come from 40k and you're putting your toes in a Sigma, or you're coming from Bolt Action, Legions, Marvel Crisis, whatever. You, you, you found it somehow. Um, I imagine most people, when they, they start for the very first time, they are not in love with this game yet. They're testing the water. They're not jumping in the deep end. So to drop $1,000, $1,500, whatever pounds or euros or uh, whatever conversion currency you're in, um, might, might be a stretch for most people. So they often want to start with the cheapest way to get into the hobby, get some experience. If they like it, they'll continue. So picking up whether to start collecting box, whether it's splitting a box of... Uh, uh, of models like Shadow and Pain, or you know the mm -hmm. you know the various boxes that come out, you split it with a mate. It's a very cheap and easy way to get into the hobby, or even going into a buy and sell and picking up uh, the bazillion versions of Stormcast, whether it's from uh, the first box set, Soul Wars, uh, the Mortal Realms magazine. These are easy and cheap ways to get into the hobby. Again, as you're practicing your skills, whether you're learning painting techniques, um, that's another reason why I would say start with that type of army first build up your skills and knowledge, then get into what you love. The other part of the equation here, and uh, being in Australia, um, I'm also not governed by Games Workshop. So I don't have the grand tournaments at Nottingham. Um, I don't have most of, I don't have events that require me to have Games Workshop models. So if I really wanted to get in Sons, Sons of Behemoth, and uh, I'm restricted by price, or I drop that money for whatever reason I'm in. Um, there are so many cool third-party manufacturers, whether it's 3D printing and getting resin models printed. Um, you've got people like Creature Caster or um, uh, Mantic. There are other, th any Google search will bring up a whole bunch of Gargant equivalents. Now, are they the right scale? Uh, how do they compare versus others? You'll have to do your own research. But um, from a pricing perspective, the only other thing I'll say here is that I've already gone out and bought a whole bunch of Gargans. I'm already looking at my fourth Mega Gargant. Um, I think the val I think value is in the perception of the beholder. So if I'm going to play with these models for 12 months, 18 months, spend my time on the kit, it's worth investing into. There are a lot of local game stores that offer 10%, 20% on Games Workshop products. So again, yeah, if you are strong for cash, go to, go to. I'm not going to name them. I don't get any kickbacks and I probably shouldn't name anyone anyway. But, you know, again, any Google search will bring up a local game store that will give you 10 or 20% off your, off your product. Um, I'm just going to start saying one more thing. Um, I think I think I think, I think, I think that's it. Just, yeah. Oh, oh. The, the the only other thing is is that you know as you've mentioned as well, uh, we saw techless in, in, increase in price. Yeah. I think we saw the uh, underworlds, the the new dungeony underworlds, Warcry. Warcry. Warcry yeah, uh, that, that went up. That, yeah. that was that, that was a little bit more expensive. Blood Bowl was a little bit more expensive. And you got to appreciate where we are, which is currently December of 2020. The world has changed. Manufacturing has changed. Um, uh, the world's economy has changed. Uh, a lot of businesses have lost a lot of money during COVID. Uh, we, I don't know if this is an indication of a price increase in the future. Um, so uh, comparing Gargants to a, a current kit uh, may not be reflective of the world we're about to enter. So I'm not saying that pricing is going up, uh, but I do know that if I was a business owner right now who has lost profits by reducing supply, increased costs, um, restriction in trade, uh, I know I, my p and has probably been smashed right now. And, um, and you know, you've got Brexit coming as well, man. Uh, who knows what Brexit is going to do to uh, the UK uh, import and export market. So um, exactly. I think this is, macro, this is macroeconomics that we're, while we're looking at Gargants, we have a far greater picture that is not going to tell the story of Sons of Behemoth without understanding what's happening at a global level. Exactly, and especially talking about you know like the um, uh, taking things out of the UK and bringing things in and trying to you know obviously Games Workshop sell their products abroad and stuff. And unfortunately, I don't think that is on the top of the Brexit agenda. And I'm, maybe it is. Maybe that's why it's taken them so long to uh, may, 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 to work it out. Maybe they should roll for priority. Boris and, and Europe should just roll for priority and work out the deal. But um, I think I, I, yeah, my, my point would be for pricing is um, is don't don't be single visioned. Um, 
because it's just things are getting more expensive. Wages aren't increasing. Uh, cost of goods and services are going up. So um, if this could be indicative of some type of price adjustment, whether it's in the next 6, 12 months, 18 months. Um, but you've got alternatives if you want to look outside of the Sons of Behemoth, uh, Gargants, and um, again, if you want to run the army and you don't have to play at a games workshop or a Warhammer store or go to a Grand Heat or a Grand Tournament, then buy whatever you want. Exactly. If you've got that freedom, there you go. Um, and I think that really pretty much it. So, uh, and I think we've done a we've done a good summary in the army. Um, and I was going to finish it off by just saying like a, a last summary of why do you want to play. But I, I think we've just kind of done that now. Well, let's, let's, Is there let's, anything let's, else let's you want to say? I want to end on a positive note. We've ended it on pricing, and um, pricing okay. is challenging for some people, especially people who have out of work or have reduced hours or you know whatever it might be. So like, that, that's our pricing conversation. Let's go back to Suns, and um, I think for me overall, give me two seconds. Yeah, no worries, man. So I'm going to end the stream, and maybe you'll, I'll send you some pictures at the end, and you know you might want to put this up. But here is an example of one of my gargants. So I talked a little bit about the the shield. Um, That's cool. And you know it's got the swing. It, it broke a little bit. I just picked it up and broke just then. Um, I've heard that's an effect. Tree, the tree, the tree lord beard as well. So I put like a tree lord ancients beard. And um, I think for me, like if I think about Sons of Behemoth and what it does, it's just a fun army. It's enjoyable. It was a challenge. It was my armies on parade board as well. So I made an armies on parade board, drawing from a I saw story. That, yeah. And, and um, for me, it was a wonderful chat. So my advice to you is if you're thinking about this army, I would I would dip your toes in at minimum, get yourself a Mega Gargant, and it could be a mercenary in your force if you don't decide to go down uh, the army route uh, in total. Uh, and, and saying all of this as well, you know, Games Workshop changed their rules, changed their, their, their um, uh, the points value as well. So who knows, man, in six months' time, uh, we could have reduced prices. We could have a, uh, a white dwarf set of rules. Broken mm -hmm. realms might come in and give us some additional stuff for, for gargants. You just never know what's coming down the pipeline. So, uh, if it's something that you you're, you'd like and you're in a position to buy it, I would highly recommend getting it. I've had so much fun. Um, I'm so energized at the end of the tournament. I'm normally brain drained by thinking about all the decisions, micro, macro, looking at it at, you know, should I retreat here? Should I fight here? Should I shoot? Like, like which spell to cast? Like, I could run a marathon after that tournament that I just had completed last weekend. Like, I was just so, so much energy because all of those crazy decisions are removed from you. It's so simple. Deployment took five minutes. I just went in, did my job, had some fun took some photos, everyone took photos of the army, um, and I think it's just reflective of Gargans. Yeah. So people just want to have people want to have fun, especially now more than ever. With COVID and had a shitty year that people have had, people don't want to get down and get burninated by flamers of Zench. Exactly. They just want to get in, have fun, roll dice, be competitive, be in the game, and Sons is the perfect army for a post-COVID world, in my opinion. Exactly. Just having fun. It's like running double cabbage from Iron, uh, Iron Jaws. It's like running just a, a squeak army. It's like running just, just the most. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, 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 like 20 cockatrice, like whatever, man. Exactly. Like, but they are competitive. They're competitive. And that's the key. And that's that the it's thing. It's not just a shit list. Is they are competitive. It's like you say, you know, after, when we can all start gaming and stuff again, that's it. We just want to game. That's the point. And if you turn up, let's say you turn up to your first game. It's like, say, um, myself, I'll turn up to my first game. It turns out, what well, am I fighting? Just a load of massive giants. Brilliant. This is going to be great. Or if you want to be that person running those giants, even better. You're going to have a ball. You're going to, I think more than anything, you're a destruction player at that point. You're going to have a laugh. Welcome to that Grand Alliance. And I think, and I think that's pretty much it. So on that note, I want to say thank you very much, Anthony, uh, for joining me in this video. It's been great. It's been until... As you hinted, the more mortals of Sunesh coming out and everything else, I don't care. This, is, this is not this is not your last video. You will be doing more of these type videos. Of um, twenty twenty. The last wife. <laughs> Sunesh, I reckon January. I reckon. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent it won't be this year. But I think what uh, I'm celebrating is the fact that I've managed to catch up with the amount of armies they've released for now, which is fine and I'm happy with because when I started doing this, it was when 
I don't know, um, Ogre Moor tribes were broken down to gut busters, man eaters, and uh, fire bell. Is it fire bellies? Is that one of them? And I was, uh, that, that was one war scroll. And I was like, bellies, how am I, I going to review that as an item? So, no, so it's, it's been real. Thank you very much for joining me. Like I say, if you want to have those more like in depth tactics and everything else, please go check out um, AOS Coach and make sure you uh, smash that subscribe button for him. If you haven't already, there will be a link for it down in the description down below so you can go check that out. And I'll also link in the. Uh, I think currently you've got one talking about. Um, Sons of depends on when you depends on when you get this video out. So there will be a, at least a second video by the end of December. So uh, middle of December, I'm catching up with Vince Venturella to talk about his Sons of Behemoth. So we've already focused on Take a Tribe. We're now going to start looking at Break a Tribe and um, uh, Stomp a Tribe. So uh, there'll be plenty of videos, especially because I'm a Gargan player, and I will be playing this now for the next 12 months. I do have my my 2022 army starting work on that, but. For the next 12 months, I'm playing Gargans, and that's the goal. So there'll be plenty of Gargan discussion on my channel, whether it's just in the moment or actually list discussion. So um, look, who knows, man? Give us a couple of more months practicing it properly. And much like my, my Lumineth videos where we talked about it right at the start, now we've a couple of months, a couple of tournaments. I've already signed up for a March tournament. Uh, you know, they come March after I've, I've had another tournament and the meta has changed. How does the army look like? And I think... Um, that's exciting. Yeah, exactly. And there's um, there's the as far as I'm aware, we're aware, depending on when you're watching this, the is the winter FAQ coming out sometime around the around the corner. We don't know how this could impact us. You know, we don't know how that. It could be a points adjustment. Could go up. Could go down. Could not touch us at all. Uh, it could be new rules. Uh, we could get broken realms. Like it could be a fourth tribe in broken realms. We just don't know. Um, you know, one of the oh, sorry. Bonus for anyone who's hung out this long. One of the other weaknesses is no allies. So who knows? Maybe there'll be some allies. Maybe a part of the story will allow another tribe to be an ally tribe. So who knows? That could be cool. That would be very interesting to see. So yes, like we say, guys, go check out those videos on Coach's channel if you like a bit more in-depth talk. Um, I also want to say a, a massive shout out to all my patrons as well. They do a fantastic job. By them supporting my channel, it means that I can continue to keep making content to try and help people get into the game and try to learn the game and try to, an example in this video, find out an army you would like to play. If you would like to become a patron as well, go check out at the top of the description down below. There'll be a link to my Patreon. And anything you can give guys really helps. Even just a dollar a, um, a month really does go far. On top of that, if you can't support me that way, please just absolutely smash that like button, that subscribe button if you haven't already, and make sure you hit the bell notification as well. So it just means that you will never miss a video of mine. And I'm sure as coach will say as well, until you start making videos, you have no idea how much you appreciate people just pressing that one like button goes a hell of a long way. And I know you guys have been doing it a lot lately. I think my uh, short law video I did of uh, Scrag Rock was Scrag Rock, that's him, the Loon King. I was almost going to call him Scarsnick for a second. Um, uh, Scraggy, Scraggy, Scraggy. Scraggy, I think Scraggy. that short law video has got the most likes I've had for a short law video. So thank you so much for that. And um, Calm and Destruction. Okay, so uh, let us end this video now. And we're not going to do it on the five tries like we've done in the past, I don't think. I think we'll just do it on the the one end <laughs> like we did for cities if anyone watched that video but anyway thanks until for having me thanks for having me yeah we won't continue i was wondering where you're going with that yeah thank you thanks for having me but i think we did another video after that we did glutes my gifts as well didn't we yeah exactly so if if you're not completely sold in this army and you're thinking of maybe another destruction one go check that one for sure but anyway until next time guys remember to stay safe wear a mask wash your hands so we can start playing again and get these giants on the table i know things are a bit different in australia but in the uk i'm going insane because i haven't had a game for so long so until right, i'm gonna i'm gonna sign off your channel by saying name your heroes name your hero yeah you have to you have to introduce every single one of your heroes when you go into a game obviously how else do you play okay so until next time guys remember that nagash is all and all is one in the gash